Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dominic, and today, twelfth uh, of August, at eleven a.m., we are conducting a webinar on uh, building facade engineering. Building facade engineering, particularly on smoke ventilation. We have eminent uh, speakers today. We'll be talking about uh, Indian standard, how go and which direction it is going and how what are the international standards that follow and in India how many buildings are really following and how smoke ventilation is playing an important role so these are the thing that we will be talking about uh, today and I am um, very happy to see a lot of builders and architects, project managers and consulting engineers and my fellow fire professionals are joined today for this webinar Smoke ventilation is a crucial aspect of fire safety in a building design, particularly in facade enveloped buildings. The primary goal of smoke ventilation is to ensure the safe evacuation of occupants and provide access for firefighters in case of fire emergency and safe evacuation of occupants. Smoke ventilation and facades by automation refers to a system that is designed to automatically control the ventilation of smoke in the event of fire or other emergencies. The primary focus of such system is to keep escape routes clear from smoke, facilitate the occupants to evacuate and provide access for firefighting team to come in. So today let's understand a automation of smoke ventilation system, compliance with building codes and standards, design flexibility, aesthetically blend with architect elements. It's important to note that smoke ventilation system need to be carefully designed, installed and maintained to ensure their effectiveness. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Dominic for you and uh, we are from uh, almost 33 years in the fire industry. So I have a very important uh, personality that is Mr. V. Suresh, the president of Focus and is also the chairman of National Building Code of India. He is the former chairman of IGBC and former CMD and HUTCO. Over 58 years he has been in the in infrastructure industry and he is the power of the energy to all of us who are in the focus and who are whoever in the building segment. He has received almost 18 awards to cap with CID Industry Don Award in 2021, IBC Life Safety Achievement Award in 2014. And he is also the president of Good Governance India Foundation and Good Urban Governance Initiative for meeting the challenges of urbanization and making smart, green, sustainable and vibrant city through work in Municipalica, which is in, you know, big news across the country about municipal. He heads it and he's been heading this uh, movement on municipal, where all the municipal corporations, all the uh, representative of uh, smart cities are all involved in this. And I'm always proud to welcome and it's always privileged to hear him out today and he's going to open, give the opening remarks on smoke ventilation and followed by Mr. Um, uh, v. Suresh, we have a dynamic speaker on the subject, Nikhil Parashuraman. He's a graduate in mechanical engineer and he leads the AC controls business in India. And he has vast experience on installation of uh, smoke automation, uh, ventilation, smoke ventilation automation. So he has been traveling length and breadth of the country. Very interesting to say he is also qualified commercial airline pilot. Very nice to see that you know we have pilots also joining fire industry and trying to make everybody's life easy and convenient and comfortable. So, with this, I would like to welcome our keynote address, Mr. Uh, B. Suresh, over to you, sir. Sir, over to you, sir. 
Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Dominic. Can you hear me properly? Yes, sir. Unfortunately, we can't see you because I know you are a technical. Yeah, yeah, I'll explain that. Yeah. Very happy. Good morning to all the distinguished uh, participants to the program. We are we are uh, increasing from 85 to 98 in the last less than one minute. I'm sure the century mark will be done. Yes, 99. And uh, very happy to see such a wonderful participant here. Very my uh, sincere apologies because I am actually in a place between Delhi and in a UP city where the there has been some some glitches on my uh, laptop. I'm not able to get the video, but I'm lucky that the audio is on. Kindly bear with me on that. You can't see me, but I can see you all in the in the sense of participation in a very large way. So let me take the time allotted to me of the order of about 10 minutes time to do the setting and rightly uh, indicated by uh, uh, Dominic, the uh, whole theme is all about building facade engineering and the smoke ventilation aspect in a very large way. So uh, what I would like to say is with the nature of building construction going on in a very large way, and more so in the last 20 to 30 years, with tall buildings coming and uh, mixed use development coming within vertically within the same building, as well as uh, alongside over there, one of the major components that we always look are the various safety aspect, fire safety, structural safety, uh, public safety, life safety, electric safety, etc. And one of the major issues that we find in all the building fire that we have is the issue on smoke related concern. And therefore, smoke ventilation becomes an important one. But before I talk about that, I want to just tell you very briefly that the National Building Code of India 2016 version, earlier you had the 2005 version, 83 version and the 70 version identifies large number of inputs related to the uh, issue on fire safety in general and also the public safety as well as the fire protection requirement and concerns on smoke ventilation in detail. As a matter of fact, all the leading fires that has taken place the last about five years time, the number of people who have died out of fire out of burn is only about two to three percent. And out of smoke ventilation, which has come uh, as a result of smoke spread in a large way, asphyxiation, the carbon monoxide and NO, all these being inhaled by the people are not able to control. That's about 85% and above of all the deaths and all the fire takes place because of even the famous Ubar, Ubar gas, Ubar uh, cinema theater fire or various hospital fires, which you keep on hearing at regular intervals office fires, et cetera, et cetera. It is the smoke which is going to be the most important aspect of how to take care of that. If you're able to control the smoke and take care of the smoke uh, extraction and removal in the proper way, then you will be able to get by fire safety through the right level of uh, uh, design or passive design in terms of the fire uh, resistant walls and roofs and uh, uh, doors and windows and shutters and lift installation, etc., air conditioning installation, ducts, etc., are reasonably under control, but smoke is an important area which is now assuming large importance. And take my word, in the 2025 version of the National Building Code, which is now revising the 2016 version, the smoke control aspect will be receiving substantial amount of coverage. I want to tell all our distinguished audience who are there uh, to know about this particular aspect. We have got good coverage, reasonably good coverage in the 2005 and 2016 version, but we want to elevate that and to provide clarity in this more so because as I said, if 85% are death of due to fire is not due to burns and scalding, but due to ventilation, the smoke uh, coming up, then we got to really give attention more on that. So that's one aspect. The second major aspect that comes over is that the way in which modern buildings are coming are the building facades also have glasses in a large way. Now, as you might be aware, the National Building Code Part 6, Section 8 has an exclusive thing on the complete thing of glazing and facades to be provided in building. You are aware of that. You are all aware of that. The first time anywhere in the world, this provision has come. You should also be aware that keeping in view the type of concerns that we have on the glass windows and all that, the NBC 2016 has made a very clear provision that 10% of the 
class uh, uh, facade there has got to really take care of the provision for uh, opening and the, that opening is required for various purposes for the access and ingress for the personal fire personnel plus also a part of the thing in terms of extract of uh, the smoke ventilation to take place especially in facade related component there as rightly brought out by dominic and i'm very happy you mentioned about that you have the extractors coming but when you have a uh, the facade also coming how you can automatic uh, smoke ventilation system that's where nickel and his team come over there his organization has done substantially large work with the latest uh, state of the art technologies that they have in the whole world on uh, uh, smoke ventilation through automatic operation, especially when you have a, a facade linked uh, program, how to do it. One is to manually because openings are there, but to do that particular thing with the automatic uh, automation solution, not automatic automation solution to be brought in over there in a very large way. And this is an area which has got an uh, enormous amount of impact where not only the, the concerned architects, the concerned civil engineers who have done the design and the uh, specifications of various materials, etc., the complete uh, fire uh, protection specialist to, uh, to be uh, uh, involved, and also facade engineering. Facade engineering, I'm happy Dominic has used the right word. It's actually become an important hardware. It is not just the structural engineers or the civil engineers uh, and the architects which matter. Facade engineering is a very, very integrated uh, component of uh, whole design of building and therefore they could really get into it in a very large way and glasses are very 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 vivid nature and these glasses also have various performance to be looked after one is of course the fire resistance rating that you can have on that and if it's going to be also from the point of view of the uh, uh, heat uh, ingress to be reduced and how do you design the less and less of heat uh, access coming into the building by uh, uh, right level of glass design to be done. So therefore, various performance there. Now we are going to bring in the dimensions of how you are also able to also integrate the smoke ventilation to be done, especially that 10% provision is okay. It is a major step forward. 2016 version gave a major step forward. But by the time we get the next version, we are in 2023, somewhere in the halfway mark there. By the time the next one year time, the contents of the 2025 version will be uh, decided by the particular panel of the National Building Code, including the provision reading with the part four and five protection, as well as on the facade related details there. And we'll be able to really see automation component is brought out in an increasingly larger way. And I'm sure that's going to happen. This, so this is an area where actually all the multidisciplinary people have to work together. No wonder uh, Focus, which is a forum of critical utility service, is providing the right level of framework and a platform for all of us to work together, wherein the inputs coming from the uh, uh, electrical engineer, uh, the fire, fire protection engineer, the architects, the civil engineer, you got to incorporate this, including the mechanical device automation work has got to be done as a part of your design and your fenestration design in a large way. And fortunately, good amount of application is coming out in the country. And uh, we are eagerly looking forward to what Nikhil has to offer, not only what the world is thinking about the topic, what India is doing so far, which are the gaps which you have in your present codes or standards, which you can clarify it a little more. And that will also give the way forward for the code writers to see that provisions get into the National Building Code 2025 version. And equally important is the capacity building and the training required in the assets and facility management company. At the end of the day, buildings are going to be maintained. Uh, the whole component of the structural, non-structural finishes and services by the assets and facility management company. And all these things will, will come into operation only when the occupancy certificate is given, when people start occupying the various floors where your business occupancy or uh, uh, office buildings or uh, coming on one side, hotel can be on another floor. You can have residents on the other side. You can have retail coming. How your automation has to come in an important way for ensuring the right level of uh, extraction coming very importantly. And equally important is, uh, I think Dominic also brought out safe evacuation of the people, how well we should ensure that people do not get affected by the smoke. They are also able to get evacuated 
very early because of all these systems coming. You'll have the detector, you'll have the alarm system, but the automated smoke ventilation system is an additional safeguard, like a coverage that you will have in a very large way. Uh, and I'm very happy that uh, this is already being worked out. We'll have a lot of time for, this, uh, for the presentation and also Q&A will be coming. And it's not for nothing when you cross the 100 mark, we are already 101. I find the participant list there. I'm sure each one of them will be coming. I find Srikant Sate has said hello to me. I also want to, want to say hello back to him. You're all people who work very closely in the sector. And uh, we look forward to your very, very positive inputs. And I'm sure Nikhil will make a very substantive presentation, uninterrupted, maybe for the half an hour time period. Then you'll have a wonderful Q&A, which of course will be uh, uh, modulated, moderated by uh, Dominic. Of course, I'll also chip in wherever I am to give a response on those particular areas. Uh, but this is very, very important. And I want, once this provision comes over there, the NOC to be given for buildings by the fire officers in respect of the fire protection of building to give fire safety, life safety, fire protection on the smoke related component, how we could insist mandatorily these to be done as an important component for all buildings to come, not just a few uh, uh, sprinkler or a firefighting extinguishers or a few detectors or alarm system alone. There's an equally important component that's coming, like the automatic dampers, which are already there for the air conditioning side. Like you already have for the uh, sprinklers automatically breaking up when the temperature comes up. Similarly, this also will work under certain conditions, which are the conditions where the automation of the ventilation system will work also. I'm sure Nikhil will throw light on that, knowing him uh, uh, over the last uh, one and a half decades on his important work there. He brings a lot of passion. He's very young. He's got the latest ideas on uh, with most of the uh, technology providers from Britain and other countries there. Uh, he'll be able to show what exactly are the things. Where do we stand? India stand as far as the smoke ventilation and the automation of that today. In terms of, are we four out of ten, three out of ten, or five out of ten? And if on the developed world, if it's eight or nine out of ten, how do we catch up? What we need to do in 2003, in 2004, so that by 2025, to, to when we have the next revision coming, by the time we get the industry gets prepared and get geared up to deal with that. So with these opening remarks, my 10 minutes time also is getting over. I would like to uh, see how best Nikhil can make his presentation. I'm sure uh, Dominic will invite him to do the speaking, he being the moder moderator Thank of you, the whole program. Uh, I'll you. stop at this point of time. Thank you very much, Dominic, for calling me. My Thank you, sir. Once again, uh, I'm somewhere near Hapur now. That is between uh, Lucknow and uh, uh, Delhi. Unfortunately, the video is not clicking on my laptop here. It's very sad. But I'm sure we'll make it up uh, with our contribution in the session. Thank you once yes. again. Yes, sir. thank you. Thank you so much for your energetic uh, opening remarks. Um, without not taking much time, I would like to invite uh, uh, Nikhil. Uh, before Nikhil comes in, I would request everyone to make sure that there's a Q&A box. And your Q&A box should be pertaining to today's topic, that is smoke ventilation only. Do not bring type any questions related to firefighting or anything. It should be only related to smoke ventilation. Over to Nikhil. Take it from here. Welcome. Uh, firstly, uh, good morning to everybody uh, present today for this uh, knowledge sharing session. I would like to thank uh, Suresh sir for his presence uh, today. Uh, he is a, a big, very big uh, icon in the uh, building industry. Uh, for so many years uh, and uh, I personally uh, also learn a lot from uh, him and people like him uh, in the industry and uh, all our elders are there to teach us uh, but now it's time for us to implement these things into the uh, buildings today and make a difference as we uh, proceed in this uh, fantastic world of construction. Uh, and thank you for the opening remarks as well uh, Dominic G and his team in uh, blue and grey uh, they have put. They work tirelessly, uh, you know, with companies like us uh, to promote good safety standards uh, in India through focus and also through sustainability through their decarbonization events uh, and webinars as this. And mostly, thank you all uh, to spend your time uh, with us this one one and a half hours uh, on a Saturday uh, and to give time to uh, fire and life safety uh, and to spend time with us this weekend. We shall start today. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just cut my uh, screen for now. And I'll share my screen to my presentation. 
and uh, i'll see you all at the end uh, once the presentation is complete Uh, Dominic, uh, you can see the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead. So, like, like we say, uh, smoke is the real killer, and uh, Suresh sir also just uh, mentioned how uh, smoke uh, really uh, hampers uh, vision. It hampers breathing. It hampers uh, our ability to perform. Uh, also causes hypoxia, which generally brings down the oxygen levels in the brain, and that kind of hampers with uh, our situational awareness and uh, also our ability to perform in emergency situations. So what we do today is we'll go through the uh, list of uh, uh, rather subtitles what we'll be covering today. So we'll have a short introduction of uh, SE controls. Uh, we'll look at the present day challenges uh, that are faced uh, in the, uh, you know, uh, the buildings today and what are the regulations today. What is the solution? Now, this slide is a bit interesting because there's a little bit of a video play here. Uh, and then what is the uh, governing uh, regulation that we can adapt or the equivalent regulation to Euronorms we can adapt uh, to the Indian market and bring it into BIS through uh, NBC uh, and the technology of automating as such. The future ahead, uh, we all know that fire doors today uh, can be only sold when this uh, harmonized test is being done on a fire door. It's a great movement uh, that has come through. Uh, so we look at what, how these systems can be harmonized into the facade systems. Uh, we look at various applications, so airports, infrastructure, uh, commercial buildings, which is uh, the bread and butter uh, of this uh, entire nation churning out so much of GDP uh, throughout these uh, glass buildings that are there today in all the CBDs around the uh, country. Mixed use development, uh, very crucial developments, uh, you know, which creates almost a microchasm of, uh, you know, possibilities. Uh, from residential to retail to cinema houses. So very big footfall kind of places. These are mixed use developments. Uh, and then you have mall and retail, very important for the, uh, you know, building the nation as well in terms of, you know, uh, how we are able to generate income. Uh, and then education hotels, uh, very important. Once again, uh, we all need hotels and places to stay when we travel, as well as our kids need uh, good educational facilities which are not only teaching good things, but also are fire safe uh, when you put your kids into such places. And what is the importance of maintenance? Because maintenance is very key to uh, any firefighting or, uh, you know, active or passive fire systems. So maintenance is one of the key areas that uh, we need to focus on going forward, especially for the system, which is so nascent, even after 10 years in the industry. Uh, with all your support, uh, I think we'll be able to build an ecosystem for this uh, going forward. And then what are the benefits and a little bit of a summary and we'll finish off the day with that. Uh, so just to give you a small brief, uh, we are a, SE Controls are a um, family owned global enterprise. That's how I would like to call it. Uh, incorporated in 1981 uh, with our headquarters uh, based out of Litchfield, United Kingdom. It's a very small, lovely town uh, in UK. And uh, for the past 40 years, uh, this is all we have been doing in terms of uh, creating a healthier and safer environment for everybody. Uh, as we are a very passionate group of about 140 uh, passionate members uh, globally uh, and our focus primarily lies on design, specification, manufacturing of these systems uh, and the solutions for natural ventilation as well as controls. So controls is our uh, backbone uh, and in front of which you have these uh, automatic openables uh, which uh, I will get to you uh, on how we can automate these systems going ahead for the Indian industry. And we also have execution partners uh, with us who take our systems, who are trained, uh, you know, uh, engineers and uh, labor team who go into sites, complete the job, uh, take it up to execution and commissioning, including the very important fire officer visit, uh, which is what leads to the occupancy NOC that is given at the later stage to these companies. So in India, we started uh, SE controls uh, late 2011. Um, and uh, with uh, as a joint venture partner with SE Controls uh, UK. And it's been uh, 11 uh, good years now, and we hope to see much more going ahead uh, from this industry. So the thing is, in the early days of construction, we built flat and we didn't build tall, basically because we had abundance of land and we had technology only to build that tall. And then today, eventually, we have means of you know building super tall, and uh, glass facades play a very key role 
uh, in today's world and main reasons are natural lighting thermal comfort uh, time of day situational awareness uh, you know you get uh, very good uh, green building scores as well using glass facade because of lighting and uh, natural ventilation as well can be provided and uh, more of all aesthetic brilliant views uh, like when you stand in the uh, center of new york or even when you're in one of the taller buildings in mumbai uh, it looks it just looks stunning in fact the right uh, image there you can see is of mumbai and it looks nothing like this uh, 10 years ago mumbai never looked like this so we need to use this facade uh, not only to look beautiful but also to save lives uh, and what these buildings have also done inherently has has also brought a uh, lot of challenges in terms of fire fighting and life safety uh, going super tall uh, or even going uh, as high as 15 meters has its own risk uh, in the building industry so that is a question i lay to you why not make facades safer uh, you know uh, all together so we'll start off with a little bit of statistics i mean which everybody know today in the market uh, you know it's there in the papers you google it it is there and electrical short circuit uh, you know incidences pose the most major risk in terms of uh, fire risks and this causes a lot of issues when it comes to business continuity and uh, operations of the particular uh, office or the entire building itself and financial express of uh, august 2022 reported that there are 1.6 million fire accidents or with almost uh, 27000 lives uh, that were lost and that is the real killer which is smoke so lives are mainly lost due to the suffocation of smoke inhalation and lack of time to escape uh, during this uh, due to the stagnant smoke and many times we see escape routes are blocked or these fire doors uh, in many malls i have seen myself uh, these fire doors are uh, you know put a tala and they lock it off so there is no post occupancy audits as well which is what we need to make very uh, mandatory in our industry at the moment and uh, all together when there is a fire uh, and these kind of things uh, don't give a warning and happen they just happen and uh, it affects the brand image and credibility of that company or the owner of that building in a very big way in the market and mainly uh, there is issue of compliance and maintenance are probably the root cause of these uh, accidents uh, because in today's uh, facade world if you see the the nbc states that you need to have openable panels 10% Uh, of the facade area or 2.5 percent floor area, uh, and it says you need to have a handle on it, uh, you know. But the issue is when there's a fire drill in a building, nobody even touches that facade. Nobody is told that you need to open these windows, and uh, you just try it and to scamper down using your escape uh, staircase uh, because many times you can't use a lift as well now. So regular fire audit system checks must be brought under third party fire audit. uh because the fire uh, you know the personnel uh, are, uh, are quite busy and we cannot expect them to go to all the buildings we have so we must have in the future audit companies that can take up third party audits to uh, audit major buildings including infrastructure projects uh, you know for post occupancy uh, fire safety as well and we can look at some of the challenges that are faced by these officers when they go to fight fires so many times what happens is that you have blocked exits uh, doors and many times the smoke vent handles are removed in uh, very high data secure companies so essentially nobody is going to open them and all the smoke goes and fills up into these escape corridors or even in the area where the actual people are there uh, waiting to be uh, you know shown the route to escape so what happens is eventually you know these blocked exits cause a lot of issues so that is another aspect uh which are common challenges that are faced in the industry uh when firefighters go to fight these fires or even for that matter when we go to a fire exit now the other issue that happens is roof flash overs which can happen due to very high trapped heat uh, within the compartment uh, or the fire compartment and this can cause an implosion and the facade materials also can start melting and the glass will eventually explode outwards causing further secondary debris falling uh, down onto the uh you know the road uh, so lastly smoke contains a lot of toxic chemicals like how suresh ji also very rightly pointed carbon monoxide and hydrogen cyanide a uh, few of these materials or these chemicals are there inherently in smoke and these are the real silent killers uh, you know that can cause uh, big harm and even fatal uh, accidents uh, due to this particular reason so let's look at the present day regulation where we stand today and uh, you know nowadays what is happening is because of the way our 
regulation is structured in india you have a national building code sitting on top and then that goes down to the uh, municipal corporations and the states to abide by their own fire acts and some of the states also governed by the uh, uh, take governance through the nbc as well so what this creates is it creates uh, you know a hodgepodge of situation for the uh, building industry because end of the day when you are building or strategizing fire strategy for a building in mumbai it's very different strategizing a building in say uh, thane which is next door or even say pune which is next door so there's so much of difference uh, that needs to be looked at and uh, ideally in my belief system at least there should be one nation uh, one code so let us look at some of the so this is uh, all something that you can read and in some of the fire acts as well uh, what we have noticed is in some areas they have said here you can see automatic smoke vent should be 3.3% of floor area uh, but on the right side they give no yes and maybe or an option so fire fire safety smoke safety ventilation uh, shouldn't be an option it should be a mandate and we should all follow this uh, because uh, like i said you, it never gives an alarm uh, like a morning alarm for your run or your you know office uh, it just comes when it comes and it uh, takes it away with the blaze so it's something that we need to pay very good pertinence to so this is the slide i was talking to you about where i'll play i'll i'll only play 12 seconds of this video and this is what presently is governed uh, on the uh, uh, requirements uh, in building codes today so this is a typical commercial building that i'm going to show you and the current uh, requirement that is to be fulfilled so ideally what is happening here is uh, a smoke uh, has now uh, started to bellow and uh, the person who's standing there is waiting to escape and the smoke detector is detecting the smoke sprinklers are bursting but the smoke is still there now if you see here he has opened somebody has to open this manually but that's never going to happen Uh, so eventually the smoke is going to be stuck here now i'll stop the video here i'll finish my presentation i'll come back and finish this video later on so presently what it states is 1 by 1 meter openable panel open in case of fire do not obstruct now the last line is very interesting these shall not be limited to crucible areas and shall also be located in common corridor areas to facilitate access by the building occupants and fire personnel for smoke exhaust in times of distress now neither the fire occupants job of scope works when he is going to a company to work is to open smoke vents neither is the fire personnel's job is to ventilate the smoke that should be automated now who will open the vent that's the first question some like i said in high data risk centers like it companies these handles are predominantly taken away and they are locked completely like i have visited a few it parks where the vents have been latched with screws so they cannot be opened anymore so that again goes back to third party audits uh, then in today's world we are all about automating we are automating payroll we are automating so many things in our world today and uh, because one thing that automation does if done correctly is it avoids inconsistency which happens when humans try to perform certain tasks so that is why automation is something that we need to look into when it comes to fire safety and the heat trap if this glass is not opened or the door is not opened on time can cause a lot of uh, heat trapment and that can cause the glass to break outward and thereby falling and causing secondary debris as well and mostly what happens is uh, many of the times uh, all due to uh, fire safety and i mean uh, human safety uh, the architects also don't wish to open these windows beyond a certain limit and that limit is usually 200 to 300 mm from the leading edge of the facade and that is actually fair enough because they don't want people jumping out or anything in case of an emergency which is not the right way to escape uh, using these glass panes they are not meant to escape they are meant for ventilation of smoke as seen in the nbc itself uh, so that is something we need to look into uh, these four five six points which are the downfall of today's uh, present day buildings that we are all occupied in or sitting in today so let me run you through uh, what the uk does or the european norm does in terms of uh, this particular uh, design so looking at best practice is one of the best way to implement new concepts into our designs by meeting global standards and there is no harm in sharing good standards and implementing them in uh, good ways that we can and even localizing them to certain extent because you cannot adapt everything uh, you know somebody else is doing in another country but we need to adapt it to our local requirements 
but in certain guided ways so that we, it's not misinterpreted or we find loopholes later on to uh, negate these systems. So in the UK, natural smoke ventilation falls uh, in part of two particular sections. Part two, which is uh, natural smoke heat exhaust ventilators. If you can see there, it's the whole ventilator. It's not just the actuation device. Uh, and it's also part 10, which is for power supplies. So Euronorm part two dictates the actuators and the vent profile, either of a system company or a fabricator and must be tested together as a single system. Uh, and this is what they do uh, in the European region as of now. And this must be done at accredited facilities uh, and still not the case in our region. Uh, but this is what the foreseeable future we see of uh, harmonizing standards. So we'll take a look at part two in a little bit of more detail uh, because that is to do with the actual ventilator itself. Uh, so when it comes to UK's uh, construction product regulation, uh, all these products also have to be CE marked uh, and now UK CA as well. Uh, CPR also governs the uh, marketing of certain construction products uh, in the European market and for windows that falls under smoke ventilation uh, of uh, EN 12101 part 1, uh, sorry part 2 and part 2 also has these annexes that we need to go through. So presently in India, we already test for wind load, we test seismic, we test uh, uh, opening under, uh, you know, the once the PMU is complete, you once again do a test uh, post that. Uh, to check whether the window functioning is there after your uh, uh, your uh, performance mock-up is complete. And then, but some of the certain things we are missing out are what is the free area of smoke that is actually being considered coming out of that window, uh, which is very important. Uh, when we say 10% of facade area or we say 2.5% of floor area, how that is calculated plays a very important role in terms of free area. And another place we usually miss uh, in India to test is the reaction to fire or NXG, which is one of the most important things to test. So the equivalent ISO code for this as well is there, which comes under 21927. Uh, and this will govern the ISO or International Standards Organization. Uh, and the EN 12101 uh, is an equivalent of the IS 21927. So uh, we can take this off later on online and discuss further uh, for whoever needs to know more about this. So a little bit of the design considerations. Uh, so usually when we get a particular inquiry or even a consultation inquiry, which we do quite a bit for future projects. So few projects that are two, three years down the road are already being designed today. And we are part of some of that design. So, and uh, we are designing smoke vents for natural or, uh, you know, smoke ventilation, we need to know. And uh, are these going to be top hung or bottom hung vents? Because presently, if you can see the reason uh, the man was standing next to a top hung window is because he can only access it at vision height uh, where his hand reaches automatically to a handle. But that is not the ideal location. As you can see, the fire reservoir, the smoke reservoir almost comes all the way to his waist. Uh, and then what are the size and weight of the smoke vent? This determines uh, how much you can open off that window in terms of the glass pane weight. So if the weight is more, you're not going to be able to uh, open that window a lot uh, because you need that much more pulling back force to pull that window shut uh, once again. Uh, angle of opening required, this again is related directly uh, to the uh, you know uh, amount of free area that can be provided. And also the height of the window is a big restriction to angle of opening as well. So uh, suitable hardware is very important. So hardware, as we know, in iron mongering in facade, tender specifications, we often see that they must be uh, SS306 and they do have their own fire tests as well. But what is happening is that they are hardware with this actuator on this window all put together. Uh, ideally, that's not the right way. It's a good way to start. And it's like it's better to have some system than no system. Uh, but going ahead, things can change for better. And then we ask the customers, uh, what is the performance criteria for that facade? So what is the wind load that it needs to act on? What is the seismic loads? Uh, and what is the uh, basic opening that is required in terms of uh, free areas? That is a little bit of a gray area today in the Indian market, free area calculation. Uh, but we can work on that. Uh, if there are architects and facade consultants here. Uh, we can definitely work on those lines and make it better. And then you can have a more achieved effective free area or a geometric free area as code uh, designs it. So these are some of the uh, ways you can uh, open windows in a particular building and all of these systems can be automated and we also have roof systems uh, which can be used in very large infrastructure projects which I will tell you as we uh, go ahead and every project needs a different approach 
and uh, you know uh, fire strategy cannot be a copy paste uh, solution end of the day so this particular system uh, it requires attention from both facade side as well as the mep side uh, i would say 10 to 20% uh, of the work is on the facade side and about uh, 80 to 90% uh, of work is in the controls and mep side uh, because end of the day uh, you know the activation <laughs> products are nothing but the hand but the actual brains are sitting behind the system uh, which are your uh, controls package uh, that often go in tie in with the system and are very important so the right design will lead us to the most optimum solution and actuators usually are driven by a dc motor uh, connected to either a chain or a spindle rod type of an application and they must be tested to en12101 part 2 uh, so that your certified uh, product goes on that particular window and usually chain openers are better for vertical vents uh, which are on the facade and linear uh, type actuators like for skylights or for smoke hatches uh, you would rather go for something like a linear actuator because that has more pushing pulling force in terms of uh, opening that window so controls as well when it comes to controls it must be tested to part 10 uh, because they govern a lot of things like uh, power surge uh, elv uh, testing and it also governs the battery backup that is there within these products because according to euro norms uh, all the control panels must uh, have provide 72 hours of battery backup and this is in case the 230 volt fails during a fire uh, you don't need to depend on a third party or site generator and the systems can work independently to open these panels in the incipient stages of the fire itself so system integration plays a very key role here uh, and it's a very interdepartment dependent product this particular one so there is facade involved there is structural involved like for some level of concrete or you know paneling work we'll need on, on uh, concrete walls uh, then you'll also have to involve the MEP team, the fire team. So it's a very uh, mixed, uh, you know, uh, disciplinary job, this one. And for our region, we have trained uh, system handlers uh, who do all the cable installation, cable laying, commissioning of the system. Uh, and they have done a lot of IT parks and uh, large infrastructure products, uh, products with us as well. So this is the basic, uh, so the system architecture is quite straightforward. You have a controller sitting behind and then you have the actuator on the window sitting in the front and then you have your emergency call point or your manual control point so system architecture is quite simple and straightforward but what plays a more key role is how each of the systems need to be tailor-made for the type of project and the type of fire strategy that you are looking for for your uh, particular building so going back to nxg uh, of part uh, 2 en uh, 12101 what it does it tells is uh, you know, we are testing, like I said, for structural weather performance. So why not for fire safety as well? So regulation and testing like this will ensure that a fully tested solution uh, is getting designed, tested, specified, and lastly implemented on uh, our projects at home and uh, worldwide. So we have tested with about 28 system companies uh, globally. Uh, many of them are available in the Indian market as well. And these systems, uh, the system companies in the UK can only sell the smoke vent if the entire package is tested together so we are still not there yet but that's the way to go and uh, you know that's the future as we see it so what this test particularly does is it tests the window to 300 degrees to 30 minutes and once the 60 seconds uh, the window opens uh, then they check it uh, whether the 10 the area of opening has shortened more than 10 percent uh, of the opening that's already required so if it closes more than 10 percent then the test is a fail basically so EN certifications, uh, we provide for all the products that we have in the market. And as usual, you can see that the glass facade buildings are becoming very prominent today in the market. And even the glass, uh, the windows are becoming quite large as well. Uh, so because of that, we went ahead and did a multi-point locking test as well, uh, which governs the locking of the entire system, uh, which can then make sure that the uh, weather performance also is met. Uh, going forward in the, these kind of buildings because the fabricator needs to provide around 10 years warranty for a system. So weather performance is a very key aspect of uh, facade going ahead. So now we we'll jump into applications. This is my interesting bit. Uh, personally, I love airports. Uh, like Dominic said, uh, I was also a trained commercial pilot. Uh, but today I'm doing this and I'm very uh, happy and proud I'm part of this company and uh, this industry. Uh, so first application we look at is airport and infrastructure and one of the recent ones we have done is uh, Goa airport in uh, Mopa. 
So we did the makeup air ventilation over there with top hung vents uh, at the bottom uh, on the facade area. And then we had a high, high level vents as well on the roof, uh, which made sure that the smoke, uh, when it is pushed uh, through the uh, building area, is going upward and uh, out of the building system rather than staying inside. So these are basically low level intake vents that provide uh, you know air intake as a makeup air. And then you have high level vents uh, on the top and usually you have uh, the linear actuators uh, put it on these uh, uh, smoke hatches as you can see. And these are some of the uh, other infrastructure and airport projects that we have uh, executed. And uh, Lucknow, uh, Suresh sir said he's very close to Lucknow. So once the new terminal opens, uh, you will see some of our work over there. And it's good that uh, companies are implementing these systems in very uh, mass footfall areas because smoke is a very big issue in such areas when it happens. So this is for infrastructure projects, basically. So for project to project, you know, these systems will vary. Now, in a lot of the airports that we are doing, we are seeing that the uh, width of the grid width of the facade is quite wide. So based on the dimension of the window, it's very key to provide the correct amount of push points, as we call it, to open and close that panel. Uh, so this needs to be a designed approach. It cannot be a cost based approach. Uh, because cost-based approach in fire uh, and just leads to overvalued, uh, over-engineered systems which sometimes don't work. So, you know, you need to have the design approach right first. So, we believe in, you know, design it first right uh, approach if we have. Uh, that's the best way to design these systems. So, you have these vents sitting at the facade area and these uh, hatches sitting on the roof uh, that will allow the exhaust uh, in uh, the inlet of fresh air and the exhaust of uh, the smoke from the top as well. Now, going into commercial applications, which is the most uh, sought after building type in India today, commercial buildings. Uh, what happens here is where you saw the man standing uh, is similar height to where these people are standing. And eventually the fall ceiling is right about somewhere there. And if you put a window here, eventually that smoke is going to hit the roof and then start coming down all the way to your waste level. So by the time you're escaping, there's already smoke billowing and covering that area. So the ideal place to locate a window, uh, you know, is uh, closer to the fall ceiling and with a shorter height. So you can get a more opening in terms of the free area uh, that is required to be met, which is either 10% of facade area or 2.5% uh, of floor area. So these are usually bottom among open out smoke vents, ideal location closer to spandrel area. Presently, the NBC states top hung manual uh, but then that we can change as going ahead uh, with all our uh, support from the industry. And when there's very low occupancy at night, what happens in these buildings is there's literally nobody on these floors unless there's a night shift going on and that smoke is just going to be strapped there uh, if there's a fire and nobody is going to open that window. So this will cause very critical problems for facility management teams, uh, you know, scurrying here and there. Eventually the fire officers will come and the smoke will still be trapped on those floors. Because as of now, we're only pressurizing our staircase. But the only way to take a smoke out of these buildings is through these openings. And our suggestion is to specify shallow vents, which are closer to the fall ceiling and bottom hung, opening outward. And these vents will open within 60 seconds from the uh, fire alarm system. So these are some of the top uh, key uh, projects that we have done in India for commercial parks. Uh, so this is a very interesting one on the top. Uh, which we did in design with uh, LNT, where it was for a shell project. And over there, what we did was uh, based on the CFD analysis that they did, uh, they placed some low level makeup air vents and uh, on near the roof, uh, near the fall ceiling, they placed some high level vents. So that way you get uh, in uh, makeup air and out smoke uh, on the top. So most of the other buildings uh, that we're doing as of now, the vent dimensions are quite large. So they are making them very difficult to open and the openings also are uh, not the best that you can hope for. So going ahead, you know, when the system design is changed, uh, we'll be able to get better openings and uh, more smoke output uh, through those particular flows. So application three, like I said, mixed use, uh, very important today in the Indian market because a lot of revenue generation in a small pocket of area, uh, you know, developers love this. Uh, mixed use developments and they are becoming also a very key uh, factor in India because it brings a lot of things together at one point and it uh, negates this uh, reason for us to travel from place to place. So you can have dinner, you can shop for something, you can watch a movie all in one area. So that's why mixed use developments and work and stay.
so mixed use developments also will be go a big way uh, in india and here in geo world center uh, with the architects uh, and the consultants uh, they didn't go any mile short of providing the best facilities uh, you know like any of the other projects uh, where you have uh, all the uh, foreign indian and all the architects and consultants working uh, you know this project was taken to the core of its uh, uh, providing the best facilities for its people and its uh, staff who are working there so here we did bottom bunk smoke vents uh, and atrium level smoke vents as well uh, and then also they had a office tower which needed some uh, ventilation and which is now i think a residential uh, area and then ideal location like i said for these smoke vents are to be placed uh, at low level and in atrium areas we can have uh, makeup air vents uh, which are low level vents to provide makeup air and some of the main thing we do in terms of design is also the controller placements all the cabling routing that needs to be done because cabling is one of the key uh, items on a project on this particular project anywhere between 30 to 40 maybe 50 kilometers of cable was laid and a typical commercial tower of 33 floors uh, anywhere between uh, 30 kilometers of cable is laid uh, for our systems so cabling plays a very important role uh, and execution as well and these are some of the uh, products that we did on this particular uh, systems that we provided here so here you can see this is the ideal location for ventilators to be provided uh, which is what even our old homes in fact had if you go to towns you'll still see those old homes with a small hatch on top and that is nothing but to ventilate the heat from that uh, area and fire access doors as well were provided at low level so that fire officers can ingress the property as well and uh, some of the conferences uh, room as well had smoke vents over there so when it comes to uh, retail uh, mall and warehouse scheme warehouse actually uh, bis is now uh, doing some work on warehouse actually and uh, which is due in september and uh, this particular system uh, works in such a way that once the smoke is starting to produce uh, the roof is at quite a high level uh, in warehouse schemes or cold storages or even retail areas where you have large atriums Uh, like this one on the right which is geo world drive in uh, mumbai's bkc uh, so these areas they need to be ventilated using two strategies one where you have makeup air vents at the bottom uh, with opening vents and then you have smoke hatches on top uh, because if you don't have any system the roof will collapse inward now the present code states that if you have sprinklers then you can leave these vents as manual i don't understand that concept because sprinklers put the smoke out they don't do anything to the put the fire out they don't do anything to dampen the smoke uh, and to extract smoke you need ventilators or mechanical extractors so they must be automated going ahead uh, in cold storage facilities or warehouses uh, because presently some of those uh, spinning turbines or spinning mills that you see on top uh, they can not uh, they may not work the way uh, free areas are designed because at least 3% of your warehouse area you must provide ventilation and i don't know how those ventilators provide uh, adequate ventilation when there is a fire or smoke so these are some of the retail or warehouse buildings that we have done uh, ikea hyderabad where the ikea had a uh, warehouse facility at the back uh, if most of you visited as you come out into the checking counter you will see a large warehouse scheme so that's where they keep all the products so since it's all wood and other products they had to ventilate that and they have done a store in uh, mumbai as well uh, where this is a uh, ventilators provided uh, at the entrance level and even in dubai so we have offices uh, you know across the globe uh, then i'll show a short video later on so you can if you are from any of those regions you can contact us there as well uh, so malls like i said uh, key places again high footfall areas and uh, we must make sure that uh, proper ventilation schemes are in place uh, to extract the smoke now education like i said Uh, schools colleges um, you know key places where the future of our nations are being built uh, so we need to provide adequate ventilation uh, for this particular system and uh, end of corridor vents can be provided in hotel lobbies lobby areas to ventilate the corridor because in hotels usually what happens is the uh, sprinkler uh, douses the fire and the occupant comes to the corridor and corridors must be kept clear of smoke so that is some uh, key aspect to be provided in education and uh, hospitals hospitals as well similarly corridors need to be key be kept clear of smoke so now maintenance maintenance plays a very key role uh, in any firefighting system 
So ideally, post installation testing and commissioning, uh, our clients usually have an AMC uh, annual maintenance contract, which is very important. And presently, sometimes what happens is the internal teams uh, handle the AMC, but they are not trained to do so. So if you're sitting in a building, you have a smoke ventilation system, and it's not being uh, uh, you know uh, you know maintained by the right professional. You must ask a question: Who's maintaining my systems? Because end of the day, uh, your life is at stake when you're sitting in such buildings. Regular maintenance ensures that the products installed are properly functioning and when called for in an emergency. And most projects we notice that, uh, like I said, they're handled internally and they must be given to the right people uh, to maintain it the right way. And mainly only trained professionals must be able to do this. So at SE Controls uh, in the UK, what they have developed is they have developed CloudLink uh, system. So CloudLink is basically a preventive maintenance system where you can understand what is going on in your site uh, sitting in a remote condition and we can provide this data back to you. So in India, we have not started implementing this in a big way because it requires 4G integration and, uh, you know, internet and bandwidth and so on. But going ahead, we do wish to implement such uh, advanced systems. So I like they say baby steps is the best way to go. So, you know, we'll come to this uh, when it happens. But however, you know, remote is something that we are all used to now post COVID. And imagine sitting somewhere and knowing that your building is safe. Uh, it can play a very key role to people like developers going ahead as well. So basically, we'll run through some of the benefits uh, now. So cleared pathway for the occupants, better breathing and visibility uh, for the occupants as well, and easy ingress and egress for both fire officers as well as the occupants. And we can potentially lead to longer travel distances because you're passively evacuating the smoke uh, as it is generated from the incipient stages itself. And lastly, you're preventing the uh, spread of smoke uh, because the thick black smoke is what basically uh, has all the toxins uh, to basically suffocate a human being. And uh, you can ideally property damage is reduced to a certain extent uh, because you can curtail damages that occur from flashovers due to trapped heat. So to summarize, we looked at the importance of facade control. Now, I did say I'll go back to that slide. So I will be going back to that slide. Uh, and then uh, what are the common challenges faced uh, in the industry today uh, in terms of for fire officers as well as for occupants in the building? And what is the current day regulations in India and importance of smoke ventilation and control? Best practices, like I said, is the best way to learn and share uh, ideas and come up with better designs going ahead. And system testing uh, that we say that it should be a completely uh, tested solution and some of the case studies uh, and examples. So case studies and examples, I know I ran through a bit quick because uh, time is of the essence, uh, but we can always discuss uh, outside of this. And now let's go to the right solution that must be provided. So like I always like to say, it should be a designed approach and never an afterthought. So just before I conclude, I would like to go back to that video and finish off uh, what I started. So just bear with me. So yeah, so when we start off with this particular one, so this is where we started off uh, the uh, video, as you saw, where the gentleman's, you know, noticed that there's smoke and he's trying to escape and the smoke already come towards his waistline and the window is open. So this is what we are recommending as of now uh, and which is uh, creating a smoke free layer, which improves means of escape. So automatically, as you can see, uh, the smoke doesn't come down into the uh, cabin, but it goes right, right out. So in this particular one is what we are doing now presently for all the uh, infrastructure buildings where you have makeup air vents at the bottom and top uh, smoke vents at the top area. So this particularly ventilates the roof and then you have makeup air providing the excess uh, fresh air to take the smoke out. So this is the solution that we want to provide. And now just before I close, uh, just a quick video. Uh, they always say that, uh, you know, when you're doing something with passion, it shows. And this video, even today when I watch it, I think it's around four or five year old video. Uh, it still gives me, you know, uh, chills when I watch this video and goosebumps. So I hope you feel that and just wanted to share this with you. Uh, I hope the audio is coming through. So this is who we are and this is what we do. Happy Independence Day to all of you. And uh, these are contact details. Uh, and like I said, one nation, one code. That's what we must work towards. So we'll uh, take up the question. The first question which I saw in the chat box is, 
little bit interesting so people also would like to know what is the difference between smoke control smoke management and smoke ventilation so yeah i mean smoke management has smoke clearance and smoke control uh, so smoke control is your controlling and compartmentalizing the smoke and smoke clearance or smoke ventilation is your ventilating the smoke so when you're compartmentalizing the smoke you use dampers in internally within the system and compartmentalize it and control the spread of smoke uh, whereas ventilating is ventilating the smoke uh, to the outside to reduce the trapped heat and toxic gases uh, within the compartment of that uh, fire emergency area or if i may add uh, add to that question vijay gupta who has raised a question smoke management is a larger process involved covering everything and Correct. there is smoke ventilation is the physical contractual system available in the building either through an exhaust fan or uh, through the particular uh, openable windows or uh, uh, automated windows is a smoke the uh, smoke ventilation will come control will be where you can do the automation related component there because as you said it can be also mechanical so smoke yes. management is a larger process related issue gupta ji and uh, smoke ventilation is a specific type of appliance and the control is where you are able to do it through automated system if i may say right go ahead Correct. next question okay uh, this is anonymous um, in a question that uh, how can we quantify the amount of smoke to be vented during the you know exit to access uh, assess the capacity of the installed required so basically the asking how do you quantify the smoke that need to open so i think what the question is your the this ventilation system is connected to fire alarm when the alarm is on the ventilation is open or to automation anyway you are an expert in quantify smoke how to quantify smoke to calculate the system go ahead correct sir. so basically what you need to do is uh, when like how you say 10% of facade area or 2.5% of floor area what happens there is that you need to calculate uh, that is based on a particular thumb rule that has been given to us and on that particular thumb rule you need to see these ventilators when they are in a fully open condition what is the geometric free area that you are able to pull out of that particular extractor so in the mechanical uh, field they will say number of air exchanges uh, similarly in geometric free area governed to one particular window so in in the present day what is happening is the uh, building codes that or the building designs that we are getting uh, when you see the window blocks in a particular glass building they'll all be just squares so that particular square or rectangle area is completely being considered as a hole to ventilate the smoke but what happens is later on when the building facade is complete they put a openable shutter in front of that hole and it only opens this much so the area that they they have asked you to follow which is 10% or 2.5% is not going to be achieved by that little bit of a rectangle here and a small triangle here so you need to work backwards what is the floor area you have and then what is the required opening uh, as per the code which is either 2.5% or 10% of facade area and then you need to see uh, how much opening you need to provide based on that you need to provide the number of openings uh, or the number of openings to that particular uh, angle of opening so that will then give you the proper exhaust of uh, smoke uh, but not the calculating the punch window size yes. which is what is happening nikhil nikhil if i add one more thing that will be of use uh, for the interesting question very interesting question how do you calculate the amount of smoke coming it also depends upon the nature of products which generate smoke also furniture right. interiors which generate yes. the particular one and yes. also number of air changes required for different occupants are also available uh, whether you want yeah uh, three or uh, three air changes or six air changes or 12 air changes for different occupancy spaces like in various areas identified there that will also give an indication of the amount of smoke that can possibly come from that that's also an index on the but you are right you are leading them to the right reply on that oh, go ahead please go ahead okay yeah. i'll put the sashiraj question sashiraj sashiraj is from the textile industry so please summarize the maximum smoke emitting substance which need to be avoided special mm -hmm. especially in textile chemical plastic manufacturing industries uh, so that during inspection the removal of the same to be uh, to a separate yard could be insisted 
Only, uh, only during, am, only during inspection or what? Suresh sir can take this. I'm, I'm not an expert in uh, chemical. No, 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 no. Dominic said uh, at least during inspection you remove all those smoke products. No, no, no. It should be there at all points of time. As far as possible, the interiors which cover the furniture and all the other things which will produce uh, the smoke component. Smoke will not come from a concrete floor or a, what do you call wall uh, or a false ceiling. But if you're using polystyrene material, the partition material, the textile material, including the curtains and other related components, those are the ones which adds not only the compostability of the building, but also generation of smoke. Yeah, it's a very good question, I would say, by him, which are the items which you produce the maximum amount of smoke and how we can avoid that? But you can't do that only for the inspection day. You know that. You've got to be permanently available because 24 by 7, you don't want the problem to happen on that. But I think polystyrene and all plastic-related components which are uh, contributing, which are available in the furniture, in the furnishing, in the various other uh, material, some of them even from the carpet side can also be there. So therefore, what can contribute to not the burning and combustibility component, but also smoke generation aspect. And also, therefore, it's a good question. We can make a list of all that particular thing in our, uh, in the NBC 2025 version, or the, we'll work on it. I'm sure you can all participate. We will give that. But uh, I would, I'm very happy with that question very much. Um, this question to Nikhil, whether solar PV panel could be used as a facade. Solar? Solar PV panel. Yeah. yeah. PV, you yeah. know, yeah. used as a facade and open yeah. by the, you know, actuator. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like, like I said, if your PV panel is going to be on the facade and you want to make that an openable, we just need to make sure that uh, how the technology is going to integrate uh, because that itself will have its own cabling and wiring going back like how LED lighting has uh, and then you will also need some level of uh, automation from the inside to open those panels. Okay. Again, it depends on the weight and how it is, uh, you know, how much of opening you require. So it can be designed, yes. Oh, Shrikar? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. Yeah. Uh, Saifuddin uh, is asking both uh, Suresh and Nikhil mention no uniformity in fire and noise in different city. NBC panel working to have an uniform code for smoke ventilation yeah, system. Yeah. Will the ministry yeah. to ensure uniformity yeah. of analysis. Is it right? Very nice question. Yes. Excellent question. And this is an area of major, major concern for everybody while National Building Code is not a recommend, is not a mandatory document or a thing which can be used by force. It's a recommendatory document, a guiding document. Every state has to adopt it as far as possible, full without any changes. Some amount of relaxation is given for local variations, prime minutes on open spaces, another related component there, but not in respect of the technology on fire. And we do like, and I like therefore, uh, Nikhil's last slide, one nation, one code. I think that one statement that is given one line, the last line is very, very important. So our effort should be to see that uh, as far as possible, all the state fire people, when they give their own document, uh, my own understanding is that 95% of them, sir, are utilizing uh, only the National Building Code provision. And that too, by reference, it shall be in line with National Building Code 2016 version of which will be the latest version available. But some states have recently, I think his concern is well placed, some states have recently gone in that under that uh, provision of flexibility to do adapt or adopt the provision to make some local variation. For example, heights of building, where it should be made compulsory on that, and certain amount of requirement recently, one state, I don't want to name the state, when, when to uh, dilute the requirement of the NPC provision and sprinkler, plus uh, some of those uh, pumps and all that, but later on, they burn their own finger. They have come back now to back to the NBC provision. But I, I agree with you, our whole, our whole system should be that all the NOCs should be based on a uniform approach there as long as, long as they are related to the safety of the fire safety, life safety, as well as fire protection of the building is concerned. We can't, we can't be playing with the life of fire, life with the fire, or with the people, life of people with fire. So therefore, effort should be towards that. 
There is a very major effort. Your question is, is there a major effort? Yes, there is a very major effort. I thought I should make a brief reference to you. I had a wonderful discussion with uh, the Director General of Fire Safety, Civil Defense and Home Guards, Mr. Taj Huzain, who is the highest level man in the government of India, Ministry of Home Affairs, under which, under whom the fire advisor to the government of India uh, is that you got a new fire advisor, Mr. Prashant Slonka, who has recently come over as a new fire advisor. We discussed it only a few days back. And one of their concerns is going to be exactly the uniform application of the NBC provision in all the state level fire regulation over there, because it has got to be a state document. Everybody does it by reference to the NBC, but if anybody wants to rewrite some of the provision, they shouldn't dilute the requirement. They can improve that. That's what everybody says. You, you, you can't reduce the safety factor. You can only reduce the safety factor than the NBC provision on that. So I understand the next meeting of the Standing Fire Advisory Committee meeting, we have where all the state fire officers from the various states will be coming. This will be one of the important agenda items coming, which will be discussed the next one or two months. And I'm oh, yeah. sure. And I'm sure when the 2025 version comes over, large number of the such areas or gaps which some states have found out for reason for change will also be covered. Sir, we are running out of time and people are dropping out, so we'll cover up as many questions as possible. Let us answer be a little crisp and uh, so that we can take more questions. So Rajesh Sharma is asking, how can you take care of the wind direction? Opening of a wind um, ventilator may push fresh air and thereby mixing of cooling and smoke layer, reducing visibility. So basically in this particular aspect, internally already the buildings are compartmentalized. So there'll be cubicles. So there's not going to be a mix of fresh air and then smoke going out because each area, as soon as you open the vent, this opens in the very incipient stages of the fire. And once you're opening a vent over there on the top, it's not going to bring in fresh air, rather it will push out the heat uh, because it goes from high temperature to low temperature or high pressure to low pressure. So eventually it will have to go out uh, and the incoming oxygen or incoming uh, air wouldn't have any effect on this because essentially the fire that is going to be there is going to be put out by the sprinkler anyway. So if the sprinkler does its job, then all that is left there inside is going to be the smoke that needs to go out and uh, nothing going to add to the extra fire uh, in, in means of bringing the oxygen inside. So Rajesh Sharma is asking, do we take care of the take care of this wind direction aspect while designing the system? It we need overall to do they do thing. take overall for the structural and the passive design of the building, the wind direction is taken. Wind direction is not taken or exclusively a fire related one. To my knowledge, not done. But no. as far as fresh air is concerned, the air movement. We you said remember some amount of fresh air has to come over there from bottom before the other air goes out. So that For large tall wind buildings. Direction, yeah. Just, yeah, wind direction will help. Yeah, to that extent, he's right. So, Zave Ago is asking, how can we interface or integrate the smoke control system with fire detection and alarm systems? Yeah. So, usually what happens is the, the our controllers uh, have inbuilt uh, certain uh, uh, connections and that particular, uh, we usually take a normally closed contact from the fire alarm panel or relay module and that normally closed contact is terminated to our control panel. So when the smoke detector goes off, whether it's addressable, non-addressable, that particular sends a signal to the relay panel uh, or the fire alarm panel of that floor and that particular signal comes back to our control panel uh, and opens the windows that are in that particular smoke zone detected by that smoke detector. So integration is quite straightforward, it just needs to be done correctly. Yeah, I think the way most of the installation what uh, Nikhil was referring is all integrated with fire alarm system. So you can mm -hmm. add to him directly in case you need some kind of specification how it is being done or an engineering drawing he will probably share with you. So Mohammed is asking is it necessary to have a refrigerator what quotes say about it. I think this is for Mr. Uh, yes. Suresh. Okay. Is it the necessary to have a refrigerator? They are non-negotiable. The uh, the refuge area is a non-negotiable requirement all over the world. I respect you, whatever you do for sprinkler or whatever you do for various other things on detection alarm, refuge area is one area primarily for evacuation of the people outside in different floors over there. Please, that has got nothing to link with the smoke uh, control or anything else. That will be there parallel along with the other provisions. Thank you. So, uh, Subir, Subir is asking, 
which application can be can be used in hospital icu or a ot for smoke ventilation so presently i mean i i i need to understand the structure because as of now most of the hospitals we see are uh, the window to wall ratio is almost equal or many times the wall ratio is more than the window ratio so wherever openables can be provided in terms of uh, say the uh, escape staircase if it is not pressurized uh, or even the end of corridor if it is air conditioned and not pressurized uh, and icu rooms if it is uh, air conditioned it still if it is going to be towards the perimeter of the facade uh, or the building uh, then you can provide some uh, ventilation through the existing uh, windows uh, within these areas but if it's a operation theater and it's within the core of the building then that will have to be mechanically extracted smoke but if it's anywhere and, uh, the if i may add building, uh, you know, after the series of fire that took place in the last uh, five years and more so post covid many of the buildings started getting the hospital building started getting the fire in a large way and many people dying out of smoke than the real heat and uh, uh, burns or whatever so they brought in a lot of requirement between operation theater icu and the other ward and general purpose ward that we have how you can bring in additional amount of fresh air the amount of fresh air requirement have been very clearly brought out in those particular things a little more exacting requirements are there to provide for different spaces that's a specific good question and you have answers available already to deal with that particular one thank you um sir the pandey is asking uh, that is for mr suresh if you want to move towards sustainability why do we want to use glass facade buildings why you want that because uh, you also want to have uh, what's called comfort ventilation and this is very very important aspect especially in office projects and banks and uh, it parks and all where in the working of those particular systems you require a uh, uh, substantial amount of uh, comfort ventilation that means your temperature and humidity control with 45 46 48 50 degrees external temperature humidities of the order of about 80 90 and all that the word that is called comfort ventilation the difference between normal ventilation comfort ventilation is the air conditioning component where both temperature and humidity can be yes you can do that there are a large number of buildings at the short scale smaller scale level have been provided without providing air conditioning with substantial substantial amount of passive design of the building and natural ventilation coming also the scale is very small to your direct question when you uh, maybe around uh, 1 lakh people working on an it park there where each one is working in front along with a laptop it enabled environment is there working of all the it enabled environment also require a certain amount of temperature control between also order around 23 to 26 degrees centigrade there so that's where the that's where the problem will come so but otherwise your point is well taken that if you want at the same time even if you do this how do you think sustainability in a big way for the all the green buildings which are there you are talking of integrated energy management water management waste management and sustainable development principles included that doesn't mean that you can air condition a building you don't need to do it and you don't want to have spaces with better facilities so international office spaces or banking spaces office space etc so you need a combination of both to use both the natural ventilation and mechanical ventilation system where some amount of glass cover and other things will come either through window related one and another major concern according to me is the external air pp 2.5 and pp 10 is an important concern area where the particulate matters coming in the external air external environment is an important one you don't want them to come into the uh, uh, into the into the office space so therefore the area is you want to filter them out you can put you want to uh, deal with those particular areas also so it's going to be a combination of both both natural as well as mechanical ventilation to be brought in together especially if you require many type of uh, uh, modern day office spaces the world is having but sustainability development principle to make it energy saving 30 to 40 50% energy saving water saving in a large way waste management energy efficiency carbon footprint reduction uh, all this will continue to be there so okay uh, the cost of sustainable sustainable definitely one of the final goals so can i um, i'll take the question from uh, raghav uh, raghav is asking how to ensure smoke control system is working and what yeah. method of checking of this how often you need to check nikhil you can take so, that 
Yeah, so usually once in three months to once in six months, depending upon the size of the project. And uh, day to day, if you are uh, obviously you want to do drills day to day. So uh, monthly once, if you are doing a drill, you need to make sure that the facility teams are at least trained to understand and operate the system. And if you have an AMC in place, then because you have an AMC in place, people will come automatically if there's a problem. Uh, but essentially, uh, it goes down to uh, maintaining the system with uh, yeah. approved installation partners uh, who can handle certain uh, system like this. And uh, one thing is when you're uh, designing a system like this itself, maintenance system should be in place uh, for the day to day operation of this particular uh, product or any other system that you're putting in a building. Uh, so AMC, I would say, and uh, when we do a usual check, what we do is we run the fire alarm system or we can even uh, pull a plug in the controller, which will activate a fire alarm within the controller and then these windows will open. So you need to make sure that the, when you're uh, using these openable windows, even in yeah. the present top hung condition, that the friction hinges or the butt hinges and the gaskets are not worn out or stuck to each other. So these kind of day-to-day -day, uh, aspects can be done by the facility team. And the main uh, actual, uh, you know, nitty-gritty jobs uh, of checking the batteries, whether they are functioning, uh, because these systems have 72 hours battery. So once every three years, it's recommended to change the batteries in these systems. Uh, it's a typical uh, 7AH, 12-volt, uh, two batteries we have in these controllers. So those need to be checked, whether the actuator chains are working properly. Uh, so those are the basic checks we do. And we can run a dry run system uh, test internally itself yeah. for this. Nickel, if I may add, with uh, all the nickels, it is fantastic. That's exactly what. You know, that's why for the first time in the history of India, we got the new chapter added on assets and facility management in part two of the National Building Code. I'm sure you were aware uh, the one yes. was raised the question. And that's an important one. As long as an occupancy certificate is over, building is over, uh, occupied, people forget about it. The architect is gone, engineer is gone, builder is gone. No, now no more possible. The performance of the building during its life size is becoming important there. And therefore, assets and facility management team to deal with all your fire protection system, your sprinkler, your detector, your ventilation, your air conditioning system, lift installation system, your plumbing system, all are in working condition or to be looked under part 12 national of the national building code under assets and facility management. Uh, Nikhil is using a word, uh, your facility management team will do. He's taking for granted all buildings have. India, take my word, less than even 5% of the buildings in this country have an asset or facility manager. Nikhil, it has just been a new animal has got into it now, but that's the way it should happen there. You're required to keep it running there. And therefore, there are provisions which have been brought in to give the annual renewal certificate for non lift installation. Even fire, they are thinking of bringing periodical renewal to be brought in. And as you said, intervals are very important. Is it going to be fortnightly, monthly, quarterly, or annual, or half yearly, or annual? These details and checklists for all these particulars are also included in uh, not only in part four of the National Building Code, plus also for assets and facility management. Uh, plus also the most importantly in uh, part 12 is, is already covered. So what okay. we require is also to bring that thing into operational gear. So the, thank you, sir. As you all know, 80% of the fire alarm in the country that is specifically used in public uh, um, places does not work. So the reason is we are not willing to spend a penny on maintenance. The biggest challenge is you may have wonderful fire system, fire detection system, fire separation, fire fighting. So how much do you spend to maintain? So our average, the study, the research that we have done, 80% of the not willing to spend on maintenance. You can and even there's no safety. No, no safety. safety. So building there, fire, everything, but there's no water. And there are incidents, there are research. So what we need is the systems are good, technologies are, are, are there. But That's no excuse. You require to, the water to run, sprinkler to run, everything has to run. Otherwise, there's no meaning in capital cost alone being put over there. Yeah, capital and uh, fire protection or fire fighting is not just the role of the facility managers or the fire engineer in that building or a fire department. It is you, me are responsible to ensure the system work. It is not that, okay, AC control, supplied ventilation system. So is, it should work. No, unless you involve, you know how to operate uh, the entire 
uh, occupant of the building also train on itself and then only we can achieve a safe building environment. So it is a responsibility of all the occupants of the citizen of this country that we all should know how the system will work and how things to make it operate. You don't need to wait for the fire department to come to doors of fire. So you have all the system with you and fire drill, you know, continuous fire drill is necessary for you. There's no ego for you to come and attend a fire drill. We have the biggest challenge in India is you call for fire drill, nobody turns out because he thinks I'm the boss, I'm the executive of the company, how can I go attend? So they send the driver of the maid to attend the fire drill uh, in an apartment when we do. So please remove that from your head because the way when you sit on an aircraft, the one word they use, you may be a regular flyer, but however, it is important to see the emergency evacuation of the aircraft. So they keep repeatedly saying, you may be a frequent flyer, you would have seen this drill, but however, we bring to your attention to watch this. So same thing, we would have done the fire drill, it doesn't mean we know everything. So the technology is changing, the building safety is changing, it is better that we get into understanding of all these evacuation, emergency evacuation, how do we operate. So we had a wonderful session. I want to thank... Uh, um, uh, uh, Dominic, uh, Dominic, yes, Dominic, with your permission, most of the building, when you get the completion certificate and occupancy certificate, uh, occupancy certificate by the local body, buildings are bare. Buildings are bare means you got everything clean. But the moment each, each office space comes over, that the interior design comes, and after the interior design, there is no certificate being given. And then the false ceiling comes over there, below the main ceiling. And the space between main ceiling and the bottom of the false ceiling, the space over there is also an area where substantial amount of fire-related spread, especially all those particular gases which go, especially in operation theaters and hospital area because they burst. So what I'm trying to say is that after the interiors are over in a building where false ceiling starts coming over by each of the client over there, the whole configuration of the building changes. So there is going to be a new approach as done in some of the international courts there that after the occupant study of the building is over, when interiors are done by the various, various uh, what can I say, users and occupiers, which is not done by the main builder, by them and the nature of material that's used over there, we would require one more check coming. Maybe the annual renewal certificate for fire is one methodology by which this can be tracked. I just thought I should bring this notice. No, uh, sir. Uh, as, yeah, you are the chairman of the National Building Code 2025. The whole country is looking at you uh, to make drastic changes in the new NBC yeah. going to be, as Nikhil yeah. said, code, you know, one nation. Similarly, pacifiers and ventilation has to be taken very seriously. We need to have many more chapter in uh, pacifier. Uh, even though pacifier, how do you know that it has been tested? At what rating? Which lab? So yeah. there are so many elements that we need to look at it because fire is a big thing. 29,000 people die every every year due to just fire uh, accident. And electrical fire is another big subject. How do you check the electrical system? Is it right or wrong? So for that reason, tomorrow, the next Saturday, we are having a webinar on over current protection by National Federation of Engineers. So we will be hosting on how do you protect over current, you know, the, the your valuable yeah, yeah, devices. Yeah. So we are talking about over current protection the next Saturday at the same time. And I could see that a lot of questions. Izaz is asking question, and there are recommendations coming from Ahmed also. So I would like this question to be part and Nikhil will take and uh, if Nikhil cannot answer those questions, we have Mr. Suresh, he will forward the question yeah. to him, we'll he will try and explain those questions and we also yeah. have an eminent uh, in focus, we have eminent uh, leaders and chairs who can answer to your question. So yeah. these presentations, what this whole dialogue that we had will be recorded, it's already in record. So we will share you the email that you have shared. We will send you the link so you can probably listen once again and also share it to your colleague who couldn't attend today's webinar. I want to thank once again our uh, chair, National, uh, National Building Court Chairman, Mr. V. Suresh and President of Focus for coming in and sharing his vast experience. And also our uh, Nikhil, 
and Nikhil's going to come back again. I want to insist him give us more technical, you know, engineering aspect of it. You know how the ventilation and what design. So I would like either you can bring in your colleague from UK who can talk about the designing of it. You know uh, that would be wonderful and also what our uh, European standard talks about or NMBA talks about. So we look forward to have maybe after a month or something to have another session on engineering part of engineering part of the building. How do we do that? So thank you very much, Nikhil, and um, thank you, the, uh, our uh, uh, Dominic. Wish you happy Dominic Independence Day, Independence Day. and uh, have a Dominic, wonderful. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, one minute, Dominic. Everybody who want a taping out there, please indicate it will come on the YouTube or wherever it's coming. Many requests are there. You have Mr. Larry Lawdan from Philippines, Manila. He's also there for one of the uh, hotels. He's participated there. I just thought I want to greet him. Along with also El Dabdo Soprano, also from abroad, he's participated. We want to especially thank him also, besides our Indian participants over there. Uh, you kindly put everything on the web. The whole whole session can be done so they can completely watch it. Okay, those are missing. Yeah. Yes, sir. We have, we have guests from Middle East, a lot of them. And we are from uh, you know Manila. Yes, of course, our friends are there from Brazil. People have joined. I'm sure the next session by uh, AC Control will talk more of engineering aspect of it, and we'll have many more uh, participant on this subject. Thank you very much. You all have a wonderful weekend with family. Look forward to see you again. Thank you. Have a safe weekend. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, Rich. Happy Independence Day to everybody. You too. Happy Independence Day to everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Take care. Have a very good session. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you sir. Have a good have a good weekend, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.